Hey everybody, welcome to The Realistic Prepper. This is show number eight. My co-host David Banther. Hello. I'm Jack McLean, and uh, today we're going to be talking about knives, and uh, more specifically, uh, different types of knives, why you should have a blade, just knives in general, and uh, it's something that's not given a whole lot of attention by, by your average prepper, I think. I, I've seen a few uh, a few knife videos here and there on different uh, prepping podcasts and different prepping uh, YouTube videos, uh, but generally speaking, they kind of throw it in there as almost a, uh, an afterthought, oh yeah, and by the way, you need a knife. So uh, well, what Dave and I are going to discuss, we're going to break it down today in a little bit more detail and uh, the different types of knives, why you need a knife, uh, a little bit about some training with knives, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to break it down a little further. Uh, before we go on any further though, I'd like to apologize for the mix-up. There, there was a communication problem and uh, a little bit of a setback in uploading the audio. Uh, portion of uh, the, uh, it's, the last you can, it's my fault right here guys it's all right here I I it uploaded in the system I thought it transcoded or they used some fancy word in the uh, in the, in the audio uh, hosting I went to upload the medical prep podcast mm -hmm. and I saw error podcast cannot be uploaded for the uh, less lethal weapons I'm like oh wonderful right. and our analytics show us we get a lot more uh, not views, but listens on the podcast side than we do on YouTube, which is natural. Right. We're trying to decide. The numbers are kind of really high. I'm trying to really decide if those numbers are accurate because they're kind of, I don't want to say too high. That That's a good thing, but they're very high. So um, if you are listening to this on your uh, on your iTunes, we apologize for the mix-up. The medical prep should have been the most recent one that you heard, but um, right. so is life. So. So we're, we're trying to be as consistent as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. We're trying to uh, get, a, get a podcast out a week. Come hell or high water, we're, we're trying to do a podcast a week. Mm -hmm. uh, da David, he, you know, this is not what he does for a living. This mm -hmm. is not what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there, there are going to be these little mix-ups every once in a while. But, we're, hey, we're getting better. We are. So we're, we're getting better all the time. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to be as consistent as we possibly can. And when we screw up, we'll be the first ones to uh, to say, hey, we screwed up. Hey, it's... I screw up hourly. Just, just, just ask my <laughs> wife. My wife will tell you every 30 minutes, yes. so it's okay. <laughs> my, mine too. Yeah, so all right. Let, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get started here. We, we got a pretty full podcast here today. Uh, mm -hmm. First off, uh, why, why, do you, why do you need a knife, David? Why, why, do we, why, well, do we, why would we want to carry a blade around with us? Why would we want to have a knife? Exactly, and I, I want to touch on something first, Lisa, that, that was very important. A lot of prepping uh, I see on TV or YouTube or wherever, there's talks of knives. They have knives. We all have knives. Knives are cool, mm -hmm. but there's not really a specific focus on them. Now you'll find knife-centric channels mm -hmm. like a Sherman here on YouTube runs 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 a great knife channel. There's uh, there's there there is Cutlery Lover on, here on YouTube and um, also it's a wonderful knife. All of which I will link those down below if you're listening to this on well I, either platform. Those are great resources for knives. Uh, Disclaimer, yes, I've been using a knife since I was in elementary school, but I am not an expert on knives, um, so just just bear with me if, if I make any mistakes. But okay, so to, to, to answer your question, overall for me, I mean it started for me in Cub Scouts, or Weeblos, you know, because I always reference back to my prepping as being a, a, the Eagle Scout, that's where I got started. Right. <clears throat> we had to carry a, we had to carry a pocket knife. Mm -hmm. Now generally, guys, we got we got we got, a, we got a lot of we got a lot of show and tell here. We carried a Swiss Army knife of some sort, okay? And um, we, uh, to earn the right to carry that knife, we had to have, we had, we had a card. And once you passed a basic test, you, you got this card. But every time a scoutmaster saw you do something wrong with your knife, take it out wrong, use it wrong, you got a corner cut off your, it was called your woodland shit card or something. Once you got all four corners cut off, you got your knife, well, not taken away. Your parents had to keep it, but you could not carry a knife at Cub Scouts anymore. So that was my first entry into knife and knife safety. And just since then, even before I even really thought of prepping or knew what prepping was, I always had a pocket knife. It's just um, it's just a utility. No matter what, I, where I go, what I do, I have a use for it. I think, Jack, you and I talked about this when when we were pre-gaming I think it's uh, somewhat cultural um, in the south and even in rural areas in the north and in the west that that's just what you have it's just expected if you're a man you a not, 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 not I mean women too but especially a man you don't have a knife on you it's like okay you know something wrong right so you know that that that's really it was just my culture brought up is the knife and just the utility part I mean every day from opening up a box right 
tinkering with something, it can be an all around redneck tool. So you know. all around redneck tool. Well, see, that's that's the thing. You know, I grew up, I grew up here in uh, Tennessee, West Tennessee, and uh, from the time I was, I don't know, maybe eight years old. Uh, I believe when my granddad gave me my, my first pocket knife, and it was just this little cheap, you know, mm -hmm. uh, off-brand knife. And uh, later, I upgraded when I was maybe 10 years old to a case knife or a hen rooster. I yes. It was either a case or a hen rooster. But it was basically one of these little slip joint knives. And uh, it, it was expected that you just had a pocket knife. I grew up on a farm, and it was expected you had a pocket knife for cutting string, rope, you know, bags, whatever, whatever the case may be, you had a blade. Here, here's the thing, whether it be for utility or defensive purposes or what have you, um, in the animal kingdom, every animal has a knife. Okay, if you if you look in the animal kingdom, you know your bears they have their claws, they have their teeth. Mm -hmm. Your your mountain lions they got their teeth, they got their claws. You got all these animals, and they all have knives. Mm -hmm. Human beings are the only animal that. We don't, we don't have a knife. We have no, but we have a brain, and that teaches us how to build a knife, and mm -hmm. we make our own claws, and that's what we do. For lack of a better term, we're, we're, we're smart enough to make our own tools and to be able to use those tools and to be able to have them on hand, whether it be for defensive purposes mm -hmm. or whether it be for utility. Um, but if, if you do anything other than sit behind a desk all the time, you're going to find some need for a blade at some point. I promise you. And even if you do that. I'm going to say this because I sit where you see even me. Even if you do that, yeah. you're going to find some need for a blade. You're, you're going to have that, that need at some point. I, I work in the financial industry, and this is where I sit and earn my living, guys, and right. I find a use Still, for a knife. Exactly. So if I can find a use for a knife daily, Everybody. you can find a use for a knife daily. E exactly. And, yeah. and, you know, that's kind of where we're going with this. It's not just about the tactical application of a blade and it's mm -hmm. not just about uh, uh, carrying a buoy knife out in the middle of the woods mm -hmm. and living off the land or whatever mm -hmm. you can of course do that uh, if you notice on all these survival shows the first thing that they pick you know if they only can carry one item out in the woods with them what is what is it knife. it's a knife and um, it's because there's so many things you can do with it there's so much and uh, we're only going to touch on this today i mean there that we could literally do probably a half a dozen podcasts just on knives we could do a whole podcast just on tactical blades mm -hmm. a whole podcast on the survival blades and um but today we're just going to kind of give it the once over we're going to kind of touch on each one and uh the the pros and cons uh, of you know mm -hmm. it, given given our particular situations and my background and david's background what we believe are the pros and cons of each one and uh first thing i guess you know is we, we already went over why we should have a blade mm -hmm. well it's kind of like this in a prepping in a prepping scenario um you're going to need in my opinion multiple blades and the reason why i say this is one no one blade is good for every task now now there are some good multitaskers out there 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 really are but typically speaking if a knife does one thing very very well it's not going to do other things as well so if you have a really good tactical blade chances are that's not going to be your best everyday utility blade or your 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 you know your work knife that's that's probably not and also be. jack let's keep in mind the principle which goes for any podcast you're listening to one is none two is one so exactly. if you have one of something that's like having nothing two of something is one so exactly again now so we I recommend multiple yeah, blades we discourage hoarding and stockpiling but you want to have enough tools to get to get the job done and that includes multiple knives exactly and the thing is you're not going to always you know I, me personally i carry a knife on me all the time but the knife that i carry on me about 95 percent of the time is a tactical blade well, that's not really the knife that I want to... I can cut open boxes with it. I can open letters with it. The thing about it is, if it's a dedicated tactical blade, it might be one of those situations where you really don't want to uh, flick that knife open in the middle of a nice restaurant to cut your steak. Uh, yeah. Just because of the That reaction. is more of a southern thing. Okay. So that, that is a southern kind of, thing. Yeah. It really is. But, you know, there, there have been situations where I have been in a restaurant and the... the Basically, the butter knife that they get you to cut yes. your steak with just won't do it, Crap. and you pop out your blade. And and there are there are certain situations in certain places where pulling out this monster tactical seven-inch long black uh, uh, mm. death dealer knife 
is just kind of frowned on. Yeah. And you know, if you're at a business, you don't bring this into a steakhouse to you cut your knife with. Right yeah, there. you don't bring your ten inch <laughs> yeah. K bar to a steakhouse. No. So you know, there's different things for different situations. And and my knife, like I said, my my tactical blade that I carry is uh you know it's about a three hundred dollar knife, and it's really not something that I want to break out every time I want to cut into a cardboard box and take the edge off of it or cut into you know rope or whatever. So I can, generally I will have multiple blades on or near me and that's not to say you know that I'm one of these guys that has the vest that has all these blades mm -hmm. sticking out of it I'm not but I have a utility blade that I keep in my car mm -hmm. uh, you know if I'm broke down on the side of the road or something I need to cut something whatever it's a utility blade that I keep in my car it's about a $45 $50 knife not terribly expensive but a good enough blade mm -hmm. that I know is solid and it's not going to close on my hand you know it's a, it's a good solid blade and but it's not something that I would worry necessarily about breaking or losing. Mm -hmm. Whereas my tactical knife, that that's something that I would, I, if I actually lost it, I would I would feel bad about that. You know what I mean? Three four hundred dollar blade. Yeah, you know, that hurts. You know that that hurts. So I think tactical versus utility. Um, what what is a what is a tactical blade? Uh, I mean, to me, a tactical blade. Well. We got to define two things. There's tacta cool, which I reference a tactical, lot, which, right. which I'm a big fan of tactical stuff. Right. I make no bones about it. And tactical. So when I think pure tactical, I'm thinking a knife that is going to be used more in a self defense scenario mm -hmm. or more in as a utility in an emergency situation. Might not be to defend yourself, but to escape a situation or to um, perform a specific task that you would do in an emergency scenario. Tactic cool would be more, and I, and I, and I emphasize the cool is because we like the way it looks, is more a knife, and I'm, I'm going to start, I'll kind of do my show and tell integrated here, Jack. Tactic cool would kind of be like this Gerber knife I have that I paid way too much for. It's, it's, um, it's a great knife, okay, and it's got a great, you know, uh, assisted opening there, uh, great closure. Yeah, this not to get the job done, but it's made to look more tactical as opposed to something that I think truly, if you were special forces, law enforcement, you probably would not pick this one right up. Right. Um, so to me, that's how I would so define... it's a mission-specific. It's a mission-specific knife. Uh, I like the way they look. I'll buy something that's tactical looking before I'll buy something that's just plain Jane or more... John Deere old looking, but definitely it's definitely mission mission specific. And I, I mean, for me in my collection, I'm looking at here, I have knives for every purpose. And um, uh, my the one that I carry with me the most is my Benchmade triage knife. I wanted it in orange, but all they had was the black left. This is a great knife. It's kind of a first responders knife. And now this thing's sharp as hell and could get the job done in any situation you need, but it does have that um, kind of non-sharp edge there. So if you had to go up on a scene and take someone's clothes off in an emergency, um, that's meant to go along their body and not See, hurt that, them. That, that's my idea of a multitasker right there. It is. And it, it, it has the blade that could, in a pinch, be yeah. used for self-defense. But it also has the uh, the the what I call seatbelt cutter. The seatbelt, and this right. the, guys, this cut. I had to. I had a pair of jeans that had a. Uh, it's my favorite jeans. They're worn. You know, you, you know how that goes. I had a big old piece of the hem coming off, and I couldn't really pull it off. This thing cut through it like just like butter. Mm -hmm. So really, like tomorrow, I'm driving up to Atlanta here, uh, uh, here from Tampa. That's gonna be. This will be in my pocket. I'm on the interstate right. for myself, for somebody that I that I roll up on, and just to go to the other extreme, when I'm in a situation where. Um, I mean, I, I don't I don't go anywhere where I can't carry a knife really. Besides the air, the airport, right? But um, when I'm in a situation where I have to wear a business suit and um, I still want to have a blade on me, um, this Gerber cheap little Gerber Bear Grills it looks like a card, like a very very thick credit card. Mm -hmm. And what it does is this little blade pops out. Oh, nice! And then it has um, and then it has three little orange tabs here. One is a flat head that pops out. A Phillips head and then a fire starter, and then it has a very like probably half a lumen flashlight built in. Mm -hmm. So like when I go to meetings in a business suit and I don't want to have my you know bench made clipped to my suit, mm -hmm. I throw this in my pocket and I know you know any you know and this is probably can't I'm not, not going to fight somebody off with this, but this could um it could, it could get, you it could get the job done. Yeah. So sorry, I probably digressed too much in show and tell there, but kind of wanted to show. 
the, the uh, differences there, and I also got my uh, fixed blade knives, which 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 we'll show here in a bit. But yeah, I, I think that's definitely you know you, you gave a good overview of uh, your your different types of blades there, um, and and like I was saying, you know, not not every knife is going to be good for every purpose. Can you force a tactical blade into the role of a utility knife? Of course you can. Mm -hmm. Can you force a utility blade into the role of a tactical blade? Of course you can. Mm -hmm. Are they well suited for those tasks? No, but can they be pushed into yeah. that role? They can. Um, I, I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of times they will cross over. And what we talk about, you know, as far as the different types of blades, they will. There will be some overlap. Okay. Yes. Uh, there, that's just the nature of, of any tool. You know, can you use a uh, can you use a wrench for a hammer? Yeah, yeah, you could. It wouldn't be. I've done, I've done that. I've done, I've done it. I've used oh, yeah. screwdrivers as hammers and wrenches as hammers. Is it ideal for that task? No, but exactly. in a pinch, it will serve the purpose. Exactly. Uh, so you know, you have your tactical versus utility. I recommend that you have at least one of each on hand or mm -hmm. close by. Uh, uh, I don't necessarily carry a utility blade on me all the time because I no longer live in a. Uh, um, I don't. I don't live on a farm anymore. My, you know, I'm not going to be doing a lot of manual labor. I'm just not. That's not how it works. Yeah. Um, you know, most of my, most of what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be unboxing computer parts. For that, I have my utility blade, and I was I was showing this to David earlier, and it also goes in my car, and it's just Spider Co. Uh, nice. It's just a little Spider Co. Uh, I don't actually remember what the name of this knife is. is it might be the bird. A, might, is that the Spider Co. Spider Co. Bird? Maybe. I'm not sure, but it's about a fifty dollar knife um i think i think it is yeah it's a, it's a liner lock so it won't shut on my fingers accidentally mm -hmm. it's got a good feel to it it's got about a three and a half inch blade um and this is what i use for my utility blade it's got a good point on it it's mm -hmm. good for opening boxes mm -hmm. good for cutting rope whatever but this is my utility blade that i keep close at hand and then my tactical blade that's with me all the time it's in my pocket right now is uh, emerson uh, mini commander and nice. um, I don't know how many f people that might be listening are, uh, you know, knife aficionados. If you are, you will definitely uh, recognize this blade. It has what's called the wave feature on the uh, spine of the blade here. And basically what this allows me to do is when I draw it out of my pocket, it will come open as it's leaving my pocket. So it makes this nice. knife incredibly fast to uh, to deploy in a tactical or a self-defense situation. Now, the shape of this knife, as you can see, does not lend itself well to general utility. It has a lot of cutting surface, but with the blade being the shape it is, it's just generally not a good utility blade. Um, this is designed for slashing, basically. Uh, this is designed to put as much area of the blade on a human being as is possible and to get out of your pocket and deploy as fast as you possibly can. And this is not a cheap knife by by any stretch mm -hmm. of the imagination. This is a if you can find this blade now, it'll run you around 250 to 300 bucks. Nice. So it's uh you know this is really not something that I want to take out and uh, mm -hmm. uh, beat up and cut boxes open with and uh, uh, string and all this. This is one of those uh, this is one of those knives you take it out when it's absolutely necessary to do some damage to someone in a situation because you have yes. been pushed to that point. Can I can, can I can can I enter a sidebar here, Jack? Oh, yeah. um, you 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 have you have you you have touched a lot about the different uses for different types of knives and how we use our knives for utility. Um, prying something open with your knife can it work and will it work? Oftentimes, yes. You don't want to damage your knife. As you can hear, Jack and I throw around some prices here. A lot of our knives are you know they're mostly all over a hundred, a lot of them north of two hundred. Okay, I'm not. In the business of destroying those 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 knives, exactly. I recommend you have some type of prying tool. Now this is a little old Leatherman uh, Leatherman uh, Bruiser that's on my keychain, and I also have a, I also have a bigger pry bar in my EDC bag. I definitely I'm not saying carry a pry bar on you. Have one accessible though, because you don't you don't want to be you know using your knife to open a door. Now, if you have to, by all means, do it. Right. But if you have the option to preserve your knives, because knives aren't technically made for prying things open, though that you can use them for that. Right. I would look into getting a prying tool to kind of help save your knives, especially the ones you're investing uh, well, uh, a lot of money and, in. And I'm glad you touched on that too, as far as price goes. Mm. Uh, what 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 should you pay for a blade? Let's. Uh, and, and and this is just my personal opinion, my mm. perspective. I, I believe most of the time you're going to get what you pay for. Oh, and, exactly. And if you're, you know, if if you go out and you pay ten dollars. 
for mm -hmm. a blade at Walmart, everyday low price, ten bucks, and you get it in that big bin that's right out in the middle of the aisle. That, <laughs> yes. that, in, that impulse buy bin. Yeah. And you pay ten bucks for this knife. You're probably going to get something that's going to be good, maybe good for one use, maybe, and then it may break on you then. But you know, could you could you use it, press it in service that one time? Sure. I got one of those in my first aid kit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just a little, I don't know, twelve, thirteen dollar Walmart blade. It's about maybe a three inch blade on it, and it's basically meant to use one or two times maximum. Cut tape, cut medical bandages, whatever I need to do that one time, and then it's a throwaway blade. If it gets broken, big deal, no loss, no foul. If I need to give it to someone. Uh, mm -hmm. If someone needs a utility blade, here, just take this. Don't worry about giving it back to me. No it's funny, it's funny, Jack. When my in-laws come over, my brother-in-laws, who are all much more handy than me, and one's in the military and one's a cop, so it, not like I'm teaching somebody. Right. But if they fly here, and oftentimes they, they don't check a bag, they can't bring a knife. Mm -hmm. So when they get here, because they're always helping me do projects. Yeah, the I, knife. I, I, I say, this is your assigned knife for the week you're at my home, and they... They, they get a kick out of that, or they get to pick out a different one. Yeah, so that's just your assigned knife. Right, it doesn't have to be anything expensive. Yeah. It's just a no. basic utility blade to get them by. Now, there, there is a place for that type of knife. Um, now, knives that I carry every day that I, I will be uh, betting my life on should I need them, uh, I personally don't believe you should carry anything less than 45 50 bucks. That's where the quality is going to start, and it's going to go up from there. Uh, do you need a $450, $500 uh, uh, you know, zero tolerance, or uh, you know, Chris Reeves Sabenza, or you know, insert name of high-end mm -hmm. tactical mm -hmm. folder here. Do you need a three hundred fifty, four hundred dollar knife for self-defense? No, and you don't need a thousand dollar custom Wilson nineteen eleven for a self-defense handgun either. But mm -hmm. you know, if you're a knife aficionado, there's no, you know, there, there's no. Um, uh, there's no limit to how much you can spend on this, but in my opinion, there is a limit to where your quality starts, and in my opinion, that limits around 45 to 50 dollar range. Anything lower than that, and you're looking at, in my opinion, your disposable, one-time, two-time use knives, your loaner knives, stuff you don't care if it gets broke or not, mm -hmm. and, and your actual blades that you would carry on you. Like I said, 45, 50 dollars and up. Me personally, I'm not going to carry a knife on me that's so expensive that I don't want to use it. I, I, I agree. And my limit on that is about 400 bucks. I'm not going to carry a custom, like a pearl handled, whatever it is. If I'm afraid to use it, I'm not going to carry it. I'm just not because then I'm looking at something that's technically out of my price range. Exactly. So, you know, and like I said, it, it will depend on what kind of knife you get. It will depend mm -hmm. on the brand. I'm not really brand loyal. I, I'm not. I typically go for what works. And, you know, there, there are several... Uh, you know, probably several dozen good name brands out there. If you've never heard of the brand before and your knife buddies, your guys that are into knives, have never heard of the brand, typically you probably want to stay away from it. That's yeah. just good advice. Uh, it's the same thing with guns. I mean, you know, if, if, if someone has never really heard of that brand, probably don't want to bet your life on no, it, you know. No. So, but I feel the same way. I mean, for me, um, I mean, first off, something's better than nothing. If exactly. you have, you know, again, if all you can afford is a twenty dollar knife, that's better than having no knife at exactly. all. I agree. The quality starts at fifty. I, I, and then I like to carry as my daily driver something north of one hundred. Mm -hmm. My, in my most, I'll go. In fact, the most expensive knife. I think my most expensive knife is, is in the 200s. I, I personally, again, I'm not a huge knife person uh, or a knife snob, but I mean that in the most affectionate way. Um, I won't go north of 300, just me. It's just not, you know, I'll tend to spend more on my guns than I, I, I well. I would like to be a knife snob, yeah. I just can't afford to be. <laughs> exactly. It's just to me, um, I want quality. Now, I don't get, now, my knowledge of knives, like I said, is limited. I don't get so much of, well, what kind of, what, what, what kind of steel, you know, is this, right, is this right. knife made of? Um, you know, but I try, generally I try and stick with Benchmade. My two Benchmade knives, one of which I showed you, one's my, uh, um, my, uh, my Griptilian, right Jack, you said it was a Griptilian? That, and this right. is my custom made Griptilian, custom just meaning the website, you go pick out the colors, my wife got it for me. Um, uh, basically one of my two Benchmades are my daily driver, um, sometimes on the weekend, um, I'll, I'll do one of my Spider Co's, the Spider Co. Para mi mi Military 2, mm -hmm. great knife I got from uh, Dan or Sherman here on YouTube. And then if I'm anywhere near water, 
my uh, spider coat H1, which has um, uh, a built-in resistance to chlorine and rust. Nice. So, you know, it, 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 though it can depend on the duty, but hey, if all you can afford is this Swiss Army knife, which is less it, than 50. It's much better than the nothing you Yeah. Have. Yep. And, and, and guys, and, and well, guys, and I believe girls, I mean, I have two girls, and while I, you know, my home is, is Barbie fairy princess and everything else pink, um, you know, I intend to train my girls how to use a pocket knife, and I intend for my girls, when they're of the right age, to have a Swiss Army knife, and they can't take it to school, obviously, but they know they have their knife, and they know where to get it, and they know knife safety. Right. So yeah, so really, it, 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 it can run the gamut, and then you have your, you know, you have your multi-tools. This is the Leatherman uh, Wingman, kind of your entry-level le Leatherman. It has a bunch of different tools on here. Not so much made for uh, the blade of cutting, more for uh, that uh, utility on there. You, so. you touched on something just then um, about teaching your little ones how to uh, how to properly use a blade. Um, that that's something that didn't really dawn on me until uh, my daughter was probably 11 or 12 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, this is my youngest one I'm talking about. And she was uh, she was attempting to cut through something while we were at the gym, and. Mm -hmm. Her, uh, her older sister was here. She was in the other room doing whatever. And uh, my, my youngest daughter cut herself. Um, and some way or another, she had uh, brought the blade all the way through from the bottom of her finger through the top of the mm. fingernail. And wow. couldn't figure out exactly how she managed to do that. And then she showed us what she was doing uh, after we got done getting the stitches mm -hmm. and all that. We came home. We carried her to the doctor. We got her stitches. And... Uh, what what she had tried to do was uh, she was trying to scrape some cheese or something off the bottom of the pan, and yeah. she didn't know how to hold the blade and hold the pan without cutting herself. And it was at that point I realized, you know, this girl has never been taught how to properly use a knife. Right. And in my opinion, from the time they're old enough to be able to put their hands on one, you need to be showing them the proper way to use it. Exactly. You know, if they're old enough to pick it up, and you know they're going to be around because at some point, let me tell you, at some point, your <coughs> excuse me, at some point your kids are going to pick up a knife. Now they may do it when you're there, or they may not. They may do it when you're gone. But at Absolutely. some point they're going to get their hands on one, and you don't want that point to be like my daughter. When we're away, and and luckily we're only you know eight miles away or whatever, and we could come right home. But you don't want that that time when they put their hands on it to be the first time they've ever handled a blade. Just like you don't want the first time your kids put their hands on a gun to be while you're away and they exactly. got their hands on a gun. So definitely, I think you need to start your kids off, and uh, you know from the time they're old enough, you know, and that's going to be different with different kids. You know, some kids are mature enough at five to seven years old. Some kids it's going to be eight to ten. You know, that, that's a personal mm -hmm. thing you have to assess with your own babies. But at some point, you need to show them how to properly use a knife. And just basic, you know, cut away from you, not towards you. Here's how you hold the blade if you want to do this. Don't mm -hmm. try to cut something through, you know, and it go through your hand. Just basic stuff. Here's how to close a knife. Here's how to open a folder, you know. And, you know, that that's one of those things. I think we've both been cut. We've both been injured. Do you want to tell my story, Jack? Uh, let me. I'll tell mine, then you can tell you. Okay, yours, mine's mine's much more embarrassing. So it, I'll wait. Much more embarrassing. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was that kid. I was maybe yeah. ten or eleven years old, and I had even though I had had a knife, you know, since I was seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we all do stupid things. Okay? Yeah. And I had this uh, slip joint knife, and for those that don't know really what I'm talking about, your your old timer knife, your your case knife, your hen rooster. Basically, the blades fold out. They do not lock. They're good for basic uh, slashing, basic cutting rope, cutting string, whatever. What they're not good for is drilling a hole through something. Okay? <laughs> so I, I had this cup, and I'm trying to drill a hole through this cup, and I'm pressing on the blade, and it closed on my finger. Ooh. And uh, it, it was it was pretty nasty. It about cut the tip of my pinky finger off. And, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where no one was home at the time. I was there alone. Um, I ran to my uncle's house, which thankfully was about 100 yards away, said, hey, look, you know, my pinky finger's hanging there, and, you know, he, he, you know, medical kicked in, you know, and he got me back up and running. No problem. Could have been a lot worse than what it was, but it's just one of those stupid things that I did. Yeah. You know, I, I knew better, but it's like, you know, I'm just going to do this, and I, I'll be all right. Well, no, don't do not do that. Don't do no. that. If, if, if common sense is telling you don't do it, you probably shouldn't do it. Yeah. 
And in knife safety, I think we're going to, um, the second here of the podcast we're getting into, we're going to talk about how deadly knives can be. And they should be treated with the same respect that we treat guns, whether any other lethal weapon. I, I do consider knives, uh, certainly, uh, they are a lethal weapon. And you can see how that was left out of our podcast of less lethal weapons, because we don't count knives as less lethal. Knives are lethal, if not more so in some cases. Mine's very embarrassing. <laughs> um, because it's less glamorous than involved my Eagle Scout knife. Folks, my Eagle Scout knife. If you think of all people in Eagle Scout window knife safety, shows you when you're not paying attention, accidents can happen. I had a little, I don't know what to compare it to here. It was maybe the size of, of my whistle here. Um, it was a little Swiss Army knife, the kind of little Swiss Army keychain knives, but they made like an Eagle Scout brand that I got. Mm-hmm. I think it just had, the, had, a, it had a little blade, a little scissor thing, whatever. I was in college, uh, sophomore years. So this would have been 2002, or 2002, 2003. And uh, I guess uh, we were in my dorm room, me and my friend. Thankfully, he, he, uh, he was pre-med. And um, we were fixing to go somewhere, and uh, I went to grab my keys. Well, the blade was open. Why, I don't know. It shouldn't have been open. That's not knife safety. Right. I grabbed it with my dominant hand, my, my right hand. You can't really see it on here, but the blade just went in. I, I literally went as I was looking, grabbed the blade and the blade cut into my thumb here. Didn't hurt at the time. Looked over, saw the inside of my thumb, which I've never seen, and blood gushing out. Grabbed a washcloth, packed it on there, and thankfully again, my friend was with me who was pre-med, so he's of that mindset. He goes, we're going to the, to, to the ER right now, and they had to give me a shot, a tetanus shot, inside that that wound. Jack, that was some of the worst pain I've ever felt. It's the pain that it's so, it hurts so much it doesn't hurt. It's a high pitched frequency hurt. Mm-hmm. My legs flew up in the air. I'm, and I'm a big boy, okay? I'm a tough, I mean, I can take some pain, but it, it, so they stitched me up, and of course I was good to go. But it just shows you, no matter how small that knife is, and that was a small little rink a dink $5 Eagle Scout knife. Cut me open, sent me to the hospital. A bit, a big old boy. Okay, so it wasn't a very glamorous story to tell my friends or to tell the ER doctor what happened. But yeah, always knife safety is crucial. With the same thing as any other le- 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 lethal weapon, expose your children to it as soon as they're ready, so they know it's not a toy. Because they watch these movies, they play these video games. We're just like guns. People bring out knives and they slash you up, but you get back up and you're fine. Right. That's not how it works. So definitely, uh, knife safety is crucial, and I encourage uh, scouting to teach that if you have boys that can access a, you know, like a like access access like a scouting troop. Definitely. Um, let, let's get in a little bit. We'll touch on this just a little, and I know there's some controversy around it. Uh, fixed blades versus folders mm-hmm. versus what locking mechanism, what opening mechanism, uh, etc. Okay. Uh, generally speaking. Okay, if you're going to carry around a blade all the time, unless you live in a very, very rural area, mm-hmm. uh, you're probably not going to be able to get away with carrying around a massive fixed blade knife like like uh, that K-Bar or, you know, some of my fixed blade. You're probably not going to be able no. to do that. Um, generally speaking, most of us, you know, that live in, you know, uh, uh, we're, even though we might live in a rural area, we're going to be going to a more urban mm-hmm. area. We, we can't do that. So what we're stuck with is folders, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and your folding knives, you're going to have uh, uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of different types of locking mechanisms. Mm-hmm. Now, there's variations on a the theme. Uh, you have your, your, like I said, your slip joint knives. You mm-hmm. have your liner locks. You have, nowadays, your access lock. You have your back lock knives. And, and there's just literally dozens of different ways of locking and unlocking. Mm-hmm. What you need to do is find something you're comfortable with, okay? Mm-hmm. And David and I, we, we, we're both kind of in agreement on this. We, we like the thumb holes of the spider co. We like the thumb studs of the bench made. We like those. Exactly. And what we both agree on that we don't like is assisted opening knives. No. And, and here's no. why. Now, now I, I'm going to make a difference here. I'm not referring to automatic knives. Now, I have in my possession here an automatic knife, okay? Mm-hmm. This has a button on the side. And for you uh, audio guys, uh, I'm sorry about this. You can't see what I'm holding up here. This is a Boker uh, Top Lock 2. And mm-hmm. it has a button on the side, and there's a spring mechanism. You hit the button, and the blade jumps out. 
okay and this is a fully automatic knife now you'll have them come out the side you'll have them come out the front uh, up until recently this was actually illegal to carry in the state of Tennessee now you can have a 10 inch Bowie knife strapped to your hip and that was perfectly fine but you could not carry a fully automatic knife mm -hmm. unless you were military or law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, they have recently changed that law so I'll get some use out of this for a change but this is a fully automatic knife what, what, I, what I'm referring to when I'm talking about assisted opening knives are these knives that have the spring loaded blade but you have to start the movement with your thumb on either a hole or a thumb stud in my opinion and I know there's a lot of people that love those blades, but in my opinion, there are accidents waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. And I have cut, I have almost cut myself or lightly cut myself at least 10 times on this type of blade. And it, it's gotten to the point where now, anytime I'm at a gun show or I'm at a blade shop of any kind, if someone hands me a knife to look at, I ask them, is this an assisted opening knife before I even touch it? because I've had such a bad experience with these blades almost jumping out of my hand and almost cutting myself with them. I just don't agree with it because I think personally I can use a thumb stud or a hole or a little, you know, a little bracket or whatever mm -hmm. to get that knife out just about as fast as an automatic knife and I don't have to worry about it slicing my fingers in the process. And I think you'd agree with that, David? I, I do, Jeff. And I told you, one of the first tactical knives I bought was a SOG, it's a desert something or another. Mm -hmm. I have it in my truck, actually. Mm -hmm. That's where, and that's where it stays. Right. Um, and it is, it, it, it's a cool knife. But you do this little, you, uh, you, it thankfully has a good safety under the safety, and you just tap that thing, and it, whoosh. I mean, and I've actually, I cut the tip of my finger on it in there. And it's just um, not that I'm scared of it. I, I mean, you know, I've been around knives and weapons, but it's just um, unnecessary. It, it I want to, I want to be able to control the blade either by a button and when I know when I press this button that knife blade is going to go up in a very specific manner mm -hmm. or I'm controlling it with my thumb which I prefer mm -hmm. but that hybrid where you well you sort of control with your thumb and then it whoosh, flicks and it up comes out on its own right it's just it's not uh, there's no need uh, to deploy a knife that quickly exactly. and to me that there, unsafe there's also no safe way to carry that knife either and I tell you and here's why I say that most of the knives that have an assisted opening mechanism on them, the reason they have also have a locking mechanism on them. And mm -hmm. the reason is because of lawsuits. Because at some point, somebody's going to put this assisted opening blade in their pocket. This has a faux one, see? Right. Uh, and it's going to pop off. Red means fire, and exactly. then that means safe. Yeah. Exactly. But here's the problem with that. If you're trying to deploy that knife quickly, which is kind of the whole reason behind the assisted exactly. opening feature. Exactly. If you're trying to deploy it quickly, how is it quick to pull the knife out of your pocket and have to actuate a safety mechanism to get it into action? It's not. I can get my fixed blade knife out, my automatic knife out, and my folder out all before you can take this knife out and actuate mm -hmm. the safety mechanism and then open it up. So you're, you're losing all your perceived advantage of that assisted opening mechanism mm -hmm with your safety mechanism so you just defeated the whole purpose right there exactly uh, and so that for those reasons that you know David and I just don't like the assisted opening blades uh, automatic knives don't have a problem with them if they're legal in your area by all means carry one if, mm -hmm. if, if, if that's your chosen blade um, I would say probably the fastest into action in a tactical uh, situation is going to be your fixed blade knife uh, yes. because it's right out of the sheath and right into whatever it needs to be in um, so I'd say that's going to be your, if you can carry a fixed blade knife, a small fixed blade knife, that's probably going to be the fastest thing you can get to in a self-defense situation. I have a good example of that here is my, uh, this is, uh, it's called SC now, but it used to be known as Tops Knives. And this is their cat or uh, counter active terrorist or counter anti-terrorist knife or whatever. But basically this is a uh, about a three, three and a half inch blade. Uh, fixed blade knife. It has a kydex sheath that I can I can put on my belt or I can strap to me in any number of ways. The blade itself is a little over an eighth of an inch thick, probably three sixteenths, and uh, it has a uh, uh, what they call linen micarta handle. Really grippy, but not mm -hmm. that overly grippiness as your G10 scales are. But mm -hmm. this is just a really fast knife to deploy. It's a really sturdy knife. I don't recommend prying with your blades, as David said. But if you needed to, you could do some prying with this blade. Fix, well, fixed sturdy. blade. If, if you have to pry with a blade, a fixed blade is always blade. best. A fixed right. blade is always best. 
Right, and and you know there, there's there's a couple other examples I have over here, and at the end of this uh, podcast, uh, for for those that are listening, just so you know, at the at the end of the podcast, I'll do a little show and tell. If you want to actually see that, you'll need to go to the uh, YouTube channel, the real the realistic prepper podcast on YouTube, and you'll get mm-hmm. to see the whole thing in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get up to uh, training with the knife, okay? Um, do you need training? Now, we, we've already touched on, you know, showing your kids the proper way to use a knife and being brought up with the blade as a utility uh, uh, tool. But if you're talking about self-defense, if you're going to carry a knife dedicated for self-defense, I think, and I think David will agree with me here, that you absolutely need training with that blade as much so as you would a gun. I agree, and I would argue, and I could be wrong with my opinion, I believe even more so. I mean, yes. Anything on your body, as it, as they teach in Krav Maga that I take and as I support, anything is a weapon and should be used as such in, in self-defense. Um, but my knife I carry, will I use it in self-defense if I have to? Yes, but that is not its primary goal because I am not specifically trained in that. I have a little bit of training, but not a lot. And, and um, when you're dealing with, with um, knives and other things of that nature, and even going to less lethal weapons, I'm always in the mindset, you have to be prepared for that to be taken from you um, and uh, and then used against you. Unlike my gun, now my gun obviously can be taken from me, but with me personally in my training, if my if you're going to take my gun, there's an 80% chance I'm getting some shots off at you first. But if you take my knife, that's much more easier than taking my gun. I, I can't, sh- there's nothing to shoot you with a knife with. So... You want to make sure that you know how to use that knife where it's not going to leave your possession. And you know, you have to know anatomy. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to stab somebody. I mean, like me, I'm fat. Right. You stab me in my gut, yeah, it's going to mess me up, but I'm still going to keep going at you. And oftentimes, there are stories of people that have gotten stabbed 10 times in the back and didn't know about it because their adrenaline rush was so hard in the fight. So you have to know where, in, in, in like um, different parts of the body, where you're going to uh, stab in self defense. To make it effective, so it's not just yeah, I'm carrying a knife with me today, and I'm going to take this knife out and cut somebody with it. That's not the way it works. Right. Well, one one thing you know, one, one thing I would disagree with you on, and uh, <clears throat> and this is just because of my background and the training mm-hmm. that I've had. Uh, the the one thing I would disagree on is if someone, if I'm facing an individual and they have a gun or a knife, I am much more afraid of that individual if they have a knife than if they have a gun. Oh, you're, and, well, yes, and, you're correct on that. And, and, yes. the, and the reason why the the reason why is this: um, with a with a with a gun, I know a lot of people think it's like the movies, and you just point it at the person, and they vaporize into a red mist in the air, right? You, you all yeah. you have to do is point it in their general direction and fire, and that's how it works. Well, that's not really how it works, especially when you're talking about handguns. It can be very difficult to lay down accurate fire on a moving target. I'll give you an example. Just yesterday, Jack. Sorry, in my uh, okay. I, I take I, 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 I take a basic practical gun class every two weeks. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the footage. And in the range, they do the moving targets where we're where we're told you know a uh, shooter draw. They go right, left, center. The targets are moving at you. And Jack, yesterday I had a target. It's in the, it's in it's a silhouette, not but ten feet from me. Mm-hmm. I took three shots and could not hit it accurately in the head. Exactly. Uh, just because you're in that adrenaline moment, exactly. you know what I mean. So and, and, you're right. We'll, we'll we'll get more into that at some yeah. point too, because that's that's a whole different level right there. But yeah, I mean it's kind of like this. And if you don't believe this, try it sometime. Uh, if you have a small child who has been trained in the proper use of a handgun, okay. Uh, here, here's what I want you to do: proper use of a handgun, small child. I want you to get a moving target. I want you to wait till it's night and okay so it's, it's, it's pitch dark out here mm-hmm. and you have a moving target and I want you to give that small child th- this eight nine year old child this weapon under supervision of course and say I want you to shoot that target three times five times whatever you know you're, you're supervising you're right behind them you have everything set up see how many shots they can accurately place on that target now same same situation moving tar- moving silhouette pitch black dark I want you to hand them a box cutter, and I want you to say, I want you to go over there, and I want you to slice that thing as many times as you can. See which one ends up doing the most damage to that target. That's a very good point, and, Jack. And because a small child, 
A small, untrained child can mess you up really bad with a box cutter, whereas you give that same untrained individual a, a gun, and they're going to be useless with it. I had much rather have your, your pseudo-thug out here on the street pull a gun on me than I had a knife, just for that reason. Well, keep in mind, not in 9-11, we had planes brought down with box cutters. With box people. cutters, right. There was no guns. Right, and, and that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I had much rather have a, a thug out here pull a gun, especially if he's within 10 feet of me. If you're within 10 feet of me and you pull a gun out on me, I'm going to make you eat it. That's the bottom line. You're <laughs> going to get maybe one shot off, and it's not going to hit me, and you're going to eat that gun. With a knife, that's a whole different ball game right there. And, and you're talking about... It, people, you, you know, we, we get back to our training here and our, our realistic training, okay? This is a realistic prepper, so let's talk real. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If you ever want to know what a real knife fight looks like, and, and this is not for the faint of heart, but I want you to look up some prison attacks. Uh, go to YouTube, uh, type in prison you know, attack with a knife, whatever, whatever keywords you have to key in to get that. And they're you're dirty, see, dirty. And, and they're down and dirty, and they're really fast. They're very brutal. And what you don't see is that dojo person comes in, stabs out with a knife, and then leaves their arm there for whatever beautiful technique that the other guy at the dojo wants to do. That's not what you see. You see mm -hmm. brutality. You see it being done very quickly. Uh, as an example, one of my students, uh, we were talking about knife defense one time, and I explained to him that the first thing you need to understand is in a knife defense situation, most likely you are going to get cut. You need to come to grips with that in your mind first and be determined to fight through it. And the reason why I say this, a lot of people will disagree with me there and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're training to lose. If you're training with the mindset you're going to get cut, you've already lost. My opinion is different. My opinion is if you're training with the mindset that you're never going to get cut because whatever magic technique you think you know is going to enable you to defend yourself and not get cut, then what's going to happen is when you try to defend yourself against a blade and you get that first cut on your forearm and you look down and you see the blood and the tendons and the mm -hmm, ligaments, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're going to freeze. Oh my God, I've been cut. And by the time you think that, he's cut you 10 more times. So exactly. you, you need to have this understanding and have already accepted this reality in your mind that it can happen. But you know what? No matter if it does happen, I'm taking that guy's arm with me. You need to accept mm -hmm. that and go into it with that mindset and be able to disarm the guy. Now, my student wanted to see, he said, well, you say a real knife attack. Show me what a real knife attack looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, okay. So I took one of the, uh, well, we have, we have what's called a marker knife. And mm -hmm. what you can do is you can mark on each side with a red uh, 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 sharpie. Correct. You take a red sharpie and you mark it on each side, and it's made out of rubber, but it'll leave a mark on you wherever you get cut. Okay. And I, I marked the knife, and I said, okay, so at some point during this class, I'm going to attack you with this knife. You're not going to know when it's mm -hmm. coming. About five minutes in, I pulled the knife out, and I just started slashing and stabbing and stabbing, and I cut him. If it had been a real knife, I would have cut him about 35 times. Mm -hmm. Stabbed him about 35 times. That's what a real knife fight looks like. That's what a real attack looks like. And it's not pretty. It's, it's not beautiful. And when we say you need training, you definitely need training in defending against a blade. But like David said, if you don't know where to stab, if you don't know what to do, I mean, you're, it's, you're, you, you can be as it's, much of a danger to yourself as you are to your opponent. I agree. But, you, Jack, you're 100% correct in that how people don't really, I think, view knives as these lethal weapons. And, and sometimes, in a lot of circumstances, more lethal than a gun. Exactly. Because, exactly. A, knives are more prevalent than guns, at least, and correct, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you can laser and obtain a knife than a gun. They're legal almost anywhere. Oh, yeah. And caveat to this whole podcast, check your local state laws of what of what knives you, 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 you can you can legally carry. Um, no, I agree with you, Jack. And, like, I mean, you know, I have my two fixed blade knives here. I have my K-Bar Tonto and then my Becker, kind of a Becker K-Bar combo BK2 knife. That's a nice knife, by the way. I mean, yeah, these are great knives. Um, I would never pull these out in self-defense unless it was my last resort it's me or death because I mean this can mess you up kill you uh, very very quickly mm -hmm. 
And unless you're trained to use these things in a self-defense uh, in self-defense situation, um, you, you're better off just not doing it because um, th that could be just bad news for the various reasons that 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 you outlined, Jack. Well, and and you know it goes back to this. Uh, a lot of people say, well, why would anybody carry a, a knife to a gunfight? Well. Here, here's the fact, okay, and and this is the fact of the matter. There have been tests done, and you can look this up if you, if you're in doubt. Look up the Tuller drill, uh, T U L L E R, I believe is how it's spelled. Look up the Tuller drill, and in the early 1980s, there was a there was a case. It was a kind of a landmark case where uh, this uh, this guy pulled out a knife, and uh, the police had responded. The guy pulled a knife on the cop. Um, he was about 18 to 20 feet away. Uh, he ran toward the cop with the knife. The cop shot him, and there's this big controversy about it because in people's minds, if you're not right on someone with a blade, then you're not a danger to them. And and that was the general consensus at the time is that if you were not right on top of somebody, you couldn't hurt them with a blade. And what, uh, what Tuller did, he did a drill where he would take the average adult male, he would position them seven yards or 21 feet away, and that's where they get the magic, uh, you've probably heard the magic 21 mm -hmm. feet away. Yeah. He would position the guy 21 feet away with uh, a simulant knife, and he would have the police officer with a holstered, unloaded weapon, mm -hmm. and he would say, okay, at, you know, at, at the buzzer, I want you to attack, and I want you to cover the 21 feet and kill the officer with the knife, and typically, the average adult male could cover 21 feet and kill that officer with the knife within a second and a half. That is about one second faster than the typical officer could get his gun out of the holster and fire a shot on target. Right. So typically speaking, if the guy is within 20 feet, he can cover a distance, that distance, and kill you with a blade or a blunt weapon for that matter. It doesn't have to be a blade, it can be a baseball mm -hmm. bat, yeah, uh, a pipe, or whatever. But he can cover that distance and kill you or seriously injure you with that weapon before you can get your gun out of the holster. Now, keep in mind, these were trained police officers. They had been trained to get that gun out of the holster. They mm -hmm. had open holsters. They did not have concealing garments over these. Every little layer you add slows you down. So now you're looking at a civilian situation where you have an, an armed civilian, which most of us are, with the gun in the holster with it concealed. Mm -hmm. So now you're adding another layer of difficulty. And now you take this guy who's 21 feet away and put him 10 feet away. Now what have you got? If you can't get your weapon out of the holster and fire two to three shots on this guy in a half a second or less, you are dead, period. You're, you're just dead. You can't do it. You have to be trained enough. You have to get off that line. You have to get off the X, so to speak. And mm -hmm. that only comes with training. You don't get that by watching YouTube videos. You don't get to that point by mm -hmm. watching David and I on our podcast here. Mm -hmm. You get to that point by going to the range, finding someone who is a qualified instructor to show you these things that will keep you alive. So definitely get training because if you think you know how to use your blade or you think you know how to defend against a blade, most likely, unless you've had some pretty extensive training, you're, you're, you're kidding Exactly. Yourself. You're kidding exactly. Yourself. Exactly. So is there anything else you want to go over, David, while we're... No. I mean, just pretty much just, you know, um, as with the medical prep video and most of our videos, this wasn't so much a how-to, but just kind of a video to pique your interest in various topics of knives and to... on the hot points. Yeah, and to, you know, go... If you don't know anything about knives, first off, if you have something to add, please do so in the comments. So we we want to hear if we left something out. But if you don't know where to start, this is a great place to listen to. And uh, start with a basic folding knife that locks. Don't get a knife that doesn't lock. Start with a Gerber. I know some folks cringing when I say Gerber, but... If that's all you can afford to starting out, get a simple Gerber locking knife. Start from there and then really investigate the higher end um, knives you want to carry. And just slowly work your way into it. And if you want to use that knife for self-defense, I encourage you to seek out training. Your, your, I would say your, your, you know, your starting point, like you said, Gerber, Kershaw, uh, CRKT. Mm -hmm. uh, your mid-range is going to be your Benchmade, your Spydercos, your uh, now, and and in each one of these brands, you can go from low end to high end. Mm -hmm. You really can. You know, there's some really high end Spydercos yeah. and lower end, typically speaking. 
and then you get into your really high end range. Unless you know a lot about knives or you're just really a knife aficionado, there's really no need to go past a certain point when you're talking about a defensive blade. And in my opinion, most people would be better served to get a lower end blade and invest the rest of the money in good training. Exactly. So Amen. Might Amen. Be your best bet right there. Just like I would also advise in guns, go to the lower end firearm, take that extra three or four hundred dollars you save, invest it in ammo, invest it in a range membership, invest it in a trip to tactical response or whatever the uh, the, the the training is in your area. But that's where your money's going to be well spent right there. Exactly. And uh, hopefully, you know, we've touched on the high points here. As David said before, always check uh, the legalities in your area. Uh, what is legal here in Middle Tennessee is not necessarily legal in Florida. What What's legal there, you know, may not be legal in Georgia. It's, but n not, knives can almost be more tricky than guns with they legalities. Because, no, there's different types of guns. There are, but there, I've noticed state laws get more picky with guns and the type of guns, like the automatic gun right. or the, but the old butterfly knives. You really, even if you have your concealed weapons permit, right. and you go into a state that has uh, that ha that has that has the, the the reciprocity, you really need to make sure that you're within the law with, with knives because the cops will get you for that as quickly as anything else. Exactly, and it's like we had talked about with the less lethal weapons and the brass knuckles and all that. Mm -hmm. Just because you can buy it does not necessarily mean it's legal to carry. Uh, exactly. You know, up until recently, like I said, automatic knives. You absolutely could not carry them in my area unless you were law enforcement or military. Well, now the law has changed and you can. That doesn't necessarily mean in your location they know that the law has changed yet. So you might run into some problems there. So I, like I said, you know, and David, uh, definitely mm -hmm. recommend you find out what the law is in your area and don't push the envelope. Uh, you may no. be doing something that's technically within the law, but don't push it. You know, it, it, it may be legal to carry two butterfly knives on you. I wouldn't. There's it, no it reason. It may be perfectly legal to carry a 10-inch blade tanto on you. I, I probably would recommend against no. that. Uh, so, so use a little common sense. Follow the law and then stay kind of below what that level is. Exactly. And, and you're probably going to be all right. You're probably going to be advice. Se Seek out some competent training. Uh, you know, do some research. Like like David and I said, you know, we're here to just get awareness and touch on the high points. Uh, mm -hmm. But but definitely seek out some training. Se seek out some competent training. If if the instructor will not put you in touch with former students so you can get feedback, leave. That's a bad exactly. sign. Exactly. So, so so definitely get some competent instruction in uh, the use of a knife. Uh, learn the ins and outs. Educate yourself. You know what I mean. If anybody has any questions, uh, you can either leave them in the comment section below on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening to this via iTunes, uh, check out our Facebook, The Realistic Prepper, uh, facebook.com forward slash The Realistic Prepper. Leave a comment on there if you need to. If you have any questions, you can email us at The Realistic Prepper at Gmail. Uh, was it Realistic Prepper Podcast? Prepper Podcast. Yes. yes. All the links are below. Whether you're in the audio, whether you're in iTunes, or if you're in YouTube, links below. And Jack, mm -hmm. we have to show the giveaway winner. We do have a giveaway winner. Uh, we, we do. We it was a hard decision. It, it was, was a really hard, hard decision. Yes. It only had one entry, but this guy has been dedicated. His name's Lynn, and again, forgive me, Lynn Mc, Mc, McClellan, I think. Mm -hmm. He's been listening, and he's been um, kind of giving us some friendly advice and friendly constructive criticism on our audio and helping us make it better. Yes. He was the only entry, so he wins the... Um, I'll get this here. He wins... Uh, Back in. The, the tactical goodie bag. The, the little tactical mini bag. So, uh, Lynn, I know you're listening. If you could please email me at the Gmail address, your contact information, um, and I will send you this bag. I'm going to be in Atlanta um, tomorrow through Tuesday. So, Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, I'll have this bag sent out to you. And uh, guys, so, we'll, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely be doing more giveaways as we as oh, yeah. go along. You know, ever you know, ever how David and I decide to do it. You know, we get so mm -hmm. many likes, we get so many listeners to the podcast. Uh, we're also going to uh, we'll, I'll be doing a giveaway when we get so many subscribers on our mm -hmm. YouTube channel. I'll do a giveaway on that. Um, it might actually be a blade. I think I might actually do a blade giveaway on that, but we'll have to see. And we might do and, some uh, uh, some training giveaways, and not that definitely. I think Jack or I would claim we're experts, but Jack and I definitely have different fields like we've already pointed out where we have 
information to give you. So we might be doing in the future um, like an hour Skype training giveaway. Like I could do an hour on some medical preps for you. Right. Jack could do an hour on some combative preps for you specifically to you. So just some fun things going down the road that we're looking to to, to do for you all. And um, if you are listening on the podcast, please rate us. I think the top is five stars. If it's four or five stars, we appreciate you rating uh, the full amount of stars to help us on, on iTunes. And that's that's all I got, Jack. And as always, I appreciate everybody tuning in to, uh, to The Realistic Prepper. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys, a little bit of show and tell here at the end of the video. Uh, I have a few knives that I'm going to uh, show off. This is not going to be a review of any of these knives. It's just going to be a basic overview of the different types of knives that you might encounter. Uh, their uses, what we generally have them for, um, the different locking styles and blade styles, etc. So, here we have a, a folding knife. It's a bench made. And um, this is uh, about $135 to $145 blade. And as you can see, it has a thumb stud for opening. Uh, the blade is partially serrated, and it has a uh, anti-corrosion coating on it. Um, the handle scales here are G10, so the composite. And as you can see, it has the uh, the access lock feature. Basically, it just has a solid bar of steel that comes behind the blade and locks it. And to unlock it, you just pull it back, and you're good to go. To open. You actuate the thumb stud here, and it's it's pretty quick. I mean, as you can see, it just flicks right open. So you don't have to have the assisted opening mechanisms that are so popular these days to uh, to actually get the blade open pretty swiftly. So that would be an example of a more of a gentleman's folder. Uh, I would wear this uh, maybe to church. Uh, something that's not going to be that obvious and if I wanted to I could always slip it down into the pocket you don't necessarily have to just have it with the pocket clip so here's a, uh, a bench made folder of mine uh, next up we have an example of a, another folding knife here this is one of my mini spider coasts and this is my utility blade here this is one I keep in my car uh, just for utility purposes and as you can see it has the what they call the spider hole and uh, basically your thumb just fits right in there and it just opens right up fits the hand very very well um, this is what's known as a liner lock and basically the entire liner of the knife this little locking bar swings over when the blade comes open and it actually locks the blade shut so as you can see how that little bar of steel pops over if the camera will focus and that prevents the blade from closing in your hand. I'm a really big fan of the uh, the liner locking mechanism. Uh, I've never had one close on my hand yet, knock on wood. Probably have it happen tomorrow, but uh, knife also fits the hand very well. And uh, as you can see, it's a different type blade, more of a uh, clip point style blade, I guess. And uh, as you can see also, that thumb hole is pretty, uh, pretty slick as far as opening speed. So that's an example of a folder with a a thumb hole instead of a thumb stud and an example of a liner lock versus the axis lock on the bench made. All right, next up we have an automatic knife. This is a Boker top block two. Uh, completely automatic, has the button here. And uh, you just basically you hit the button, pops right out. Uh, the locking mechanism is built into the button so you actually have to push the button back down to close the blade and unlock it. This is an automatic knife and it doesn't have a pocket clip on it but it's good to uh, just carry in the pocket. Next up we have a uh, neck knife and uh, basically what you have here is a lanyard tied to a uh, kydex sheath and the blade itself this is a cold steel para edge neck knife. They make, I think, three or four different blade shapes. And uh, it's a very, very sharp little blade. And this actually conceals very well under a t shirt or a button up shirt. And uh, so if you, if you can't carry a knife on any other way, you might actually be able to hang this around your neck under a t shirt. All right, next up, we have another example of a fixed blade. This is my cold steel. Recon Tanto. Uh, as you can see, this is a huge knife. And like I said, I'll have the specs and everything in a review video on my other channel. But on this, I just want to give you an example. 
of how large this blade is. Uh, it's probably about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. That's much thicker than an eight, so at least 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Um, carb high carbon steel, extremely, extremely tough, extremely sharp blade. Uh, give you an overview of that in comparison to uh, some of the other blades here to show you how big it actually is that gives you an example there uh, this would be more of an example of a, a self-defense blade um, it, it's more of a combat blade not necessarily self-defense more combat oriented uh, it could be pressed into the role of a utility blade but this is more of a dedicated combat blade right here this is not really something you're going to pull out for everyday use and everyday, uh, uh, you know, utility blade. I guess you could, but that's not really what it's for. This is a dedicated combat blade here. So there's just uh, a few quick examples of uh, some blade types. I'll go ahead and lay them out for you here. Uh, let's lay that one at the back because it's the biggest. And, and there's some, some blades for you and different locking mechanisms uh, different opening mechanisms on all of these and uh, your, your example of your fixed blade here let's get the, the neck knife in the picture here as well and uh, that's just a quick overview and example of what you can see out on the market and your different opening mechanisms locking mechanisms try a, a lots of different types uh, you know borrow some of your friends knives uh, Fill them, open them, close them, use them, and find out what works best for you in what role. Uh, what you know, what what type of tactical blade do you like? What type of utility blade do you like? And it's going to be a very individual and a very personal choice. So that's just a quick overview of a few of my knives. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and check out our Facebook and our uh, iTunes podcast. Thanks for watching.